Starting us off in at number 10, Lobo the Duck. Lobo the Duck is strangely enough the combination of Lobo and Donald Duck. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, it's Howard the Duck. And was introduced in Lobo the Duck number one from 1997 and is present on Earth 9602, but in a timeline where the amalgam heroes have died. Lobo the Duck is a fearless and strangely muscular, especially for a duck, anti hero bounty hunter who, along with his shape shifting canine sidekick, Impossible Daug, is investigating the murders of several amalgam comics heroes. Lobo only agrees to find the murderers of these heroes if he gets paid up front, though but soon begins the investigation. Lobo fights his way through Gold Kidney Lady, Dr. Bong Face, and various other supervillains before he realizes that the end of the world is about to begin and only he can stop it. He has all of Lobo's powers and abilities including immortality, super strength, and a mastery of basically every weapon. He also has a genius level intellect, a superhuman sense of smell, can track anyone or anything across galaxies, oh, and is a master of quack foo. Yeah, I just want an excuse to mention this guy, but honestly, immortality makes him pretty damn powerful. And at 9, Pharaoh Man. Pharaoh Man is a combination of Colossus and Pharaoh Lab, and was introduced in X Patrol number 1, which is clearly a combination of X Men and Doom Patrol. Peter and his twin Alexi were all each other had, since even their mother couldn't bear to look at their faces. That's not even a face a mother could love. The twins shared everything from the moment they were born, but one day, while saving Alexi's life from an oncoming truck, Peter changed into living metal, stopping him. Revealing to himself that he was actually a meta mutant, but Alexi was unfortunately not. Alexi's growing resentment drove him away from his brother until eventually he left Peter alone. After this, Peter was recruited by Niles Cable, a mysterious traveler from the future, to join the X Patrol. In their first appearance in X Patrol number one, Pharaoh Man and his meta mutant teammates became involved in the siege of Latkovia against Doctor Doomsday, a combination of Doctor Doom and Doomsday, which already sounds like bad news bears. He has all the powers of Colossus, but can change into this form at will, like Feralat. In at 8, Harold Stark. Harold Stark is a combination of Iron Man and Green Lantern, and was introduced in Iron Lantern number 1 in 1997. While making modifications to a stationary flight simulator, suddenly the simulator took off with Hal still inside. It seemed to be drawn to a crashed alien spaceship, but the simulator quickly lost power and crashed as well, but only yards from that spaceship. The crash left Hal in bad shape, with jagged metal piercing his chest, but nevertheless he made his way to that spaceship. That's, that's resilient where he found the corpse of an alien. In an effort to keep himself alive though, Hal used the alien technology in the ship to make a suit powered by the alien battery inside, which Hal noted looked remarkably like a lantern. Wearing this armor, Hal fought off the aliens who had shot down Roman Sir ship but was also seen by others, being called the Iron Lantern by the media. The suit of armor not only allowed him to survive, but gave him incredible powers, allowing him to create any object he pleased out of green energy, due to the battery he used being powered by O, the living planet. Iron Lantern has the technical and genius level intellect of Tony Stark, but has all the powers of Green Lantern, which is pretty damn cool. And it's seven, Dina Prince. Dinah Prince, also known as Dinah of Themyscira, was first introduced in Bullets and Bracelets number one and is a combination of Wonder Woman and Elektra. While still young, Dinah left Themyscira to explore man's world, leaving behind her family and her adopted sister Ororo. On her travels, she worked for the King of Wakanda, who gifted her adamantium bracelets. However, she later left to set up her own freelancing business in the US. There she met Trevor Castle and the two got married. At least, they were married until their infant son Ryan was mysteriously killed and the emotional toll was too much. Both of them blamed themselves for not being able to save their son. They seemed to never plan on meeting again. However, Monarch brought the two together again and pitted them against Thanos' side, a combination of Thanos and Darkseid. Yeah. He had perceived the Lord of Apocalypse was responsible for the fate of their son, but she discovered that Ryan was not dead, merely displaced in time, and had grown up to become Kanto. Knowing that their son was still alive, Dinah and Trevor seem to restart their relationship. Dinah has the divine empowerment from Wonder Woman, giving her superhuman strength and durability, as well as a mastery over archery and hand-to-hand -hand combat. And at 6, Logan Wayne. Logan Wayne is a combination of, obviously, Bruce Wayne and Logan, being first introduced in Marvel vs. DC number 3, the same issue where this universe was created. At 5 years old, after witnessing his parents' murder, at the hands of an armed robber, Logan Wayne was sent to live with his uncle in Alberta, Canada. His uncle was a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and was ambushed and murdered by poachers a short time after his arrival in Canada. After the death of his uncle, Logan was sent to live in a home run by nuns, and as soon as he was old enough, he enlisted in the Royal Canadian Air Forces. Logan was submitted to the Weapon X Project, the Canadian Super Soldier Program. It was here that Logan had adamantium bonded to his bones and learned of his meta-mutant nature. The Weapon X Project was terminated due to his failure
failure. Because Logan was ineffective as a weapon because he had a conscience. But this didn't stop him from being pretty damn badass. Having all the powers of Logan as well as things like the claw copter and claw mobile, this is in essence a super powered Batman, which I think we all know is something to fear. Halfway through and at number 5, Robert Bruce Banner. Robert Bruce Banner is the combination of Bruce Banner and understandably Solomon Grundy, and was first introduced in Doctor Strange Fate number 1 as one of his aides. Bruce Banner was a scientist experimenting with radiation, when an experiment he was working on went horribly wrong. However, it fused him with the elemental entity known as Solomon Grundy. The fusion between Banner and Grundy became only known as the Skulk, and after a confrontation with Doctor Strange Fate, the Donk showed Skulk that he could keep him in his human form with use of magic. So in an effort to stay human, or at least be able to become human again, Skulk agreed to work as an agent for Doctor Strange Fate in return for the Doc keeping him in his human form. For most of the time. Skulk possesses all the powers and abilities of both Solomon Grundy and Hulk, and thanks to Doctor Strange Fate, Banner can shapeshift between his human form and his Skulk form at will. And since he possessed the same powers as Grundy, when he dies, he's reborn. But that's not even the craziest thing in this universe. In it 4, Blaze Allen. Speed Demon, first introduced in Speed Demon number 1, is aside from what you might have called your ex to your girlfriends, a combination of Barry Allen and Johnny Blaze. Blaze Allen was a circus daredevil who sold his soul to become the first speed demon. Yes, there are actually multiple speed demons. The demon component, Etrigan, was also formerly Jay Garrick before the Night Spectre stole Jay's soul. You know, Jay Garrick. Earth 2 Flash. The Night Spectre approached Blaze and asked him to serve in his mission to collect souls from the most pure and most corrupt, which just seems weird to me, but okay, you do you. But Blaze Allen refused, so in an attempt to persuade him, at his wedding Night Spectre stole Iris's soul. Blaze then accepted the bond hoping to get Iris back, or at least ensure her safety. It didn't work. Speed Demon speaks only in rhymes, but is a speedster with a flaming skull head that can also breathe fire. Wally West, an amalgamation of Danny Ketch and obviously Wally West, was the next Speed Demon, who accepted the power in order to help his uncle Blaze get Iris back. It's funny, because in a couple of days I'm going on vacation and I'm making it my mission to try to convince at least one person to sell me their soul. Like it's not actually gonna work, but I think it's gonna be funny if I can do it. Getting close to the end, in at number 3, White Witch. First appearing in Doctor Strange Fate number 1 from 1996, White Witch is a combination of Scarlet Witch and Zatanna. White Witch's origin is not completely known, but when she was introduced, she was acting as one of Doctor Strange Fate's aides. Fearing that access would divide the Amalgam Universe back into its original two universes, Doctor Strange Fate decides to capture and exterminate him, so he has Mix mystically teleport his three agents into his sanctum, known as Arkham Tower. Strange Fate proceeded to explain to the three that access was a greater threat than any of their previous foes, including Mephist Satanist or Baron Woten. Access managed to escape Skulk and Jade Nova by teleporting, but White Witch approached him from behind, pushed him to the ground, climbed on top of him, and with a kiss, he was knocked out. Then White Witch said that you shouldn't send a girl or a monster to do a woman's job. White Witch has all the powers of both Scarlet Witch and Zatanna, making it obvious why Doctor Strange Fate would want her as his ape. That's insane. And it can only be topped by two people. Penultimately in at number 2, Clark Kent. Super Soldier is fairly evidently the combination of Clark Kent and Steve Rogers, first being introduced in Marvel vs DC number 3 from 1996. During World War II, government scientists were working on a super soldier formula that would transform a man into much much more, into some sort of human weapon using cellular samples from an alien corpse. Clark Kent volunteers for the super soldier program and they administer the formula, as well as a good chunk of solar radiation. This mixture gave Kent and incredible abilities, including all those of Captain America and Superman. Super strength, heat vision, flight, you name it. Now known as Super Soldier, Kent wields the Superman logo as his shield. In March of 1942, Super Soldier fought Ultra Metallo, a robot sent by Lex Luthor to aid Germany in winning the war by killing Clark. But the fight started in Washington DC and ended above the northern Atlantic Ocean, when Clark sacrificed himself to take down the robot, sinking them both into the icy depths. Jimmy Olsen was one of the few witnesses, and instead reported that Super Soldier had retired after America had declared that they won the war. Fifty years later, the body was thawed out in JLA number 4, and Clark joined the Judgment League Avengers as its leader. Finally, in at number 1, 
Doctor Strange Fate. Doctor Strange Fate is one of the most powerful beings on Earth 9602, being a combination of not only Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate, but Charles Xavier as well. While traveling through the Himalayas, meta mutant Charles Xavier was rescued by Nabu the Ancient One, who at the time was Lord Supreme of Order, which is a pretty damn impressive sounding title to say the least. Taught the mysteries of the supernatural world by Nabu, Charles taps into the energies and forces of both telepathic and mystical, making the Meta Mutant Sorcerer one of the most powerful beings in the Amalgam Universe. Since he was already a powerful telepath, Charles quickly surpasses his teacher and was promoted to the new Lord Supreme of Order. Doctor Strange Fate was also one of the founding members of the Judgment League Avengers, and began pursuing threats in shadowy realms, leaving the protection of Earth to, you know, lesser beings. Number 10. Rogers This alternate version of Captain America resided in Earth 311, the 1602 reality, but initially came from the dystopian future reality of Earth 460, where Purple Man aka Kilgrave had become president for life. As such, Purple Man had seen Captain America as one of the last remaining threats to his dictatorship, and rather than make a martyr out of him through execution, he sent him back into the past, displacing the hero. Captain America took a new identity in the reality of Earth 311, adopting the name Rogers, and used his opportunity to warn the First Nations peoples of the Americas of the risk posed to their existence by the settlers who would come. As Rogers, during his time on Earth 311, Captain America helped maintain peace between the indigenous peoples of the land and the Roanoke colony settlers. In this reality, Roanoke also never disappeared due to the fact that they had Rogers there to help them survive the harsh environment of their new home. Number 9. Iron Man The bullet point version of Steve Rogers never became a super soldier. Instead, he joins Project Iron Man during World War II, becoming the first Iron Man in history. In order to become this new mechanical hero, he has to become surgically grafted to the suit. He would then fight during World War II and later retire but be called back into action to take on the Hulk, who in this reality was Peter Parker. As in most realities, Steve even as Iron Man is really no match for that hulking behemoth and ends up dying in battle against him. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, if you want more lists like it, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Age of X. This version of Captain America was kind of a villain, although it wasn't entirely his fault. He was led to believe that in order to protect the world, he and his team of Avengers would have to take out and defeat all of the mutants, which included Cap hunting down not just all kinds of mutants, but all ages of mutants as well, if you pick up what I'm putting down. This Captain America mowed down tons of mutant kind with a gun, including Mystique, who was guarding mutant children. Fortunately, Mystique with her dying breath causes Captain America to question his mission and doubt that his objective is truly noble. He decides to go against orders and instead fight alongside the mutants working to protect them. Cap dies a hero taking on the Hulk who decides to stick with the mission, calling Steve a traitor. Once again, another reality where it's Cap versus Hulk and Hulk just destroys Cap. Number 7. Union Soldier Steven Rogers What if Captain America fought in the American Civil War? Well, you can bet this is the version of the hero that we would get. Steven Rogers vs. 717 is the character who first appeared in the What If Captain America issue number 1 out of 2005. Here we explore just that version of Steve who served in the American Civil War as a Union Soldier. In the end, he turns against his villainous Colonel Bucky Barnes, who in this reality becomes the supervillain White Skull. In so doing, Steven becomes injured and is taken in and saved by the Eagle Chief, Wee Piak. Not only does the Eagle Chief save his life, but he also grants him extra strength, transforming him into the hero Captain America, who is armed with a mystical shield, peak human physique and reflexes, and is rumored to be protected against all harm. This version of Captain America fights hard throughout the years to make sure the United States is a place of opportunity for all who call it their home. He truly represents the Captain America ideal of equality. Number 6. Ultimate Captain America In the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610, Captain America is considered to be even more powerful than his 616 counterpart. The super soldier serum here didn't just prolong his life and leave him in peak human condition across the board, increasing his strength, speed, and durability, but it also gave him an accelerated healing factor and put him at a superhuman level when it came to his strength and his speed. It was once claimed that Steve Rogers of this reality could bench press a car. Across the board, this version could be considered stronger than the 616 version, although I would argue that 616 Captain America does have better leadership skills than our 1610 version. But that's just me. 
Number 5. Danielle Cage Danielle Cage is the future daughter of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. This could be who the future little 616 Danielle Cage ends up as. Or maybe not. Only time will tell if Danielle ends up having a similar future to this alternate version of herself and Captain America. Or not. In this reality of Earth 15061, Danielle Cage grows up to become the hero Captain America, possessing the abilities of both her father and her mother, meaning she is both super strong and super durable and can fly. All of that good stuff you've come to know and love from both Luke and Jessica's heroic power sets. As Captain America in the future, she also has inherited and wields the Captain America shield. Number 4. MCU Captain America I mean, of course MCU Captain America has to make our cut. The Marvel Cinematic version of the character is not only extremely popular, but it's also deemed worthy enough to lift Thor's hammer, giving us that awesome fight scene in Avengers Endgame where Thor and Captain America are switching back and forth, alternating between sharing and wielding Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. This ultimately gives Cap a big, big power boost, being able to wield Thor's weapons, especially considering that Thor is one of the most powerful members of the Avengers team, in part because of his powerful, magical, and also kind of cosmic weapons. Number 3. Carol Danvers That's right, Carol at one point managed to become Captain America. This has actually happened in more than one reality, but for this list we're going to focus on the version of Carol Cap that comes from the Venomverse. She appears as Captain America in Venomverse War Stories and hails from the same reality as Venom Rocket, Earth 18197. In the story she appears in, Captain America Carol Danvers and Venom Rocket battle it out as Rocket is looking to cash in on a bounty for the Kree who want Carol Danvers. Venom Rocket and Captain America seem pretty evenly matched here, but in the end, Rocket does not manage to capture Carol, and Carol seemingly ends up the victor of that match, though undoubtedly left with a pretty big mess to clean up as a result of their destructive battle. Carol Danvers' as Captain America still seemingly possesses some version of her Kree physiology and her 616 power set here, making her a pretty powerful alternate version of Captain America. Number 2. Super Soldier Super Soldier hails from the Amalgam Universe. Stories and characters created using the combined lore of DC Comics' main roster of superheroes and villains and Marvel Comics' main roster of superheroes and villains. Super Soldier himself is an alternate version created by combining the heroes Captain America from Marvel and Superman from DC. Clark Kent ended up in the Super Soldier program during World War II, which used alien DNA taken from a corpse that was discovered to alter Clark Kent permanently granting him superhuman powers. He has the combined power set of both Cap and Supes, making him pretty crazy powerful. Although he also comes with his own highly dangerous villain as well, the Green Skull, and his own weakness to the ore known as Green K. So keep in mind, he does have that weakness. Number 1. Soldier Supreme Soldier Supreme is what you get when you combine the mystical powerhouse of Doctor Strange with the all-American war hero Captain America. The result is a character who happens to be tough, strong, fast, and a gifted fighter while also possessing tons of mystical knowledge and abilities. Soldier Supreme hails from Warp World, the reality created by Gamora when she folded the universe in half using the power of the Infinity Stones. Here Steve Rogers participated in the Super Soldier program which was really a front for something less scientific and more magical in nature. Conducting a series of rituals, Dr. Morgan Erskine transformed Steven Rogers into the Soldier Supreme. Picking off the list at number 10, Deadpool Kid. Wade in the Wild West. Sign me up. Wade Wilson of Earth 1108 made his first appearance in Deadpool Merc with a mouth issue 7. Now when we meet him, he's wanted for bank robbery, arson, software piracy, and of course stampeding pygmy goats through an orphanage, you know, everyday things that we always do. And then even in the dusty days, Deadpool still finds a way to cause trouble. He would constantly boast about him wanting to take over the town, and he had his sights set on Sheriff Fury and Bounty Hunter Logan. After getting shot in the head by Earth 616 Deadpool, our main Deadpool, the kid went down. But he didn't stay down, of course. He survived and was next seen alongside Dreadpool in the hunt for evil Deadpools in the universe. Number 9. Kidpool. Similar name, but much different. Kidpool comes from Earth 10330. Now, he made his first appearance in Prelude to Deadpool Core Issue 2, and he started his days out as a student of the Xavier Orphanage for Troubled Boys. Now, due to his abrasive personality, he of course didn't fit in with the other super kids, so he was lonely most of the time. Now, one day, he was sent to detention with Scott Summers, and Wade convinced Scott that they should both break out and go to prom instead. I agree, I mean, detention during prom 
Tom, come on, that's just cruel. But in order to convince Scotty Boy to be a rebel, Wade promised him he'd help Scott get with Jean Grey. That ought to do the trick. While at prom, Kid Pool caused trouble and even fought Logan. It was a hot mess. Mistress Storm stopped the fight and Kid Pool was on his way out when Deadpool arrived and also recruited this Kid Pool. And before we continue with this list, if you want to go ahead and give us a thumbs up, that would be great. It helps our channel out quite a bit. You guys are the best. Thanks for your support. Now let's get right back to this video. Number eight, Dreadpool. In the reality of Earth 12 101, the X-Men brought Wade to Dr. Ben Brighton, AKA Psycho Man, in an attempt to cure Wade. Now they wanted him to shut down all these voices in Wade's head, but he didn't do that. He actually did the opposite. Wade was now encouraged to kill everybody in the Marvel Universe. And he started out by going after the Fantastic Four. Reed and the Thing were toast in just a couple of pages. Sue Storm held Dreadpool off by making his head explode, but once he healed, she was next to go. Dreadpool stole a device from Reed Richards that he used to take down the Watcher. So right off the bat, things get ugly. Number seven, Evil Deadpool. Keeping those sinister vibes going, Evil Deadpool is from our 616 main universe. He actually came to life during the pages of Deadpool Volume 4, Issue 44. Now it actually all started with Ella Whitby. She was a psychiatrist who was obsessed with Wade Wilson. She was so obsessed that she would keep body parts that he lost over time. She would collect parts of him and then keep them in her freezer. You know, right next to the ice packs, of course. So when Deadpool found out about this creepy old cold collection, he threw them all in the dumpster. He just got rid of them. But that was a mistake because once those body parts thawed out, they fused together to make another evil Deadpool. Just the smell of that freezer alone. I would have tapped out by day three. Number six, Wolverine Pool. This next one is a total badass. One of my favorites, if you ask me. Brief, but definitely memorable. First appearing in Cable and Deadpool issue 46, we see Wade Wilson after he's undergone the Weapon X program. He has a skeleton bonded with adamantium, and then he's recruited by Dreadpool to take on the evil Deadpool core members. So we join the battle and kill Deadpool Pulp, but during the fight, main Wade tossed a grenade full of bugs at Wolverine Pool. So the grenade went off and the bugs chewed at Wade's skin, just chewed him apart until nothing was left over except the adamantium skeleton and claws. Definitely the grossest way to go out, that's for sure. Number five, death mask. While I mentioned a botched surgery earlier with Wade, this next one went exactly as planned. On Earth 11683, Reed Richards was able to remove a lethal brain tumor from Wade's head, so now he was better off than ever. No evil voices, and now he was actually a genius. But did he change the world one revolutionary invention at a time? Nope, he was a master criminal. But still, he's smart, I don't know. He built an empire. Wade went by the name Death Mask and killed that world's Victor Von Doom, and his outfit was actually a red version of Doom's. It was pretty sweet, not gonna lie. Even after Death Mask was beaten by our main Deadpool, it didn't end there. Death Mask made a deal with Mephisto in order to release monsters on Earth. One of those monsters being Infernal Hulk. Ouch. Number four, Dogpool. Wade Wilson of Earth 103173, aka Dogpool, made his first appearance in Prelude to Deadpool Core issue three. Now, Wilson was a dog being used as a test subject for Mascara X, this hot new product that could replenish itself after just one use. How beautiful and lovely and convenient, might I add. Now, this version obviously is inspired from real life animal testing and abuse that happens, so it's pretty sweet when Wilson gets superpowers. Now, they thought the dog didn't make it after a test, his body turned all corpse like, so they got rid of it. But those regenerative abilities brought this pet back to life. A circus truck just ended up going by and seeing this immortal dog, and then Deadpool became the starring act of their show. Come and see the death-defying hound. What a headline. He was working there until Deadpool came and also recruited him for the Deadpool Corps. Number three, Dead Man Wade. Coming from the Age of Apocalypse storyline on Earth 295, Dead Man Wade was initially part of Apocalypse's Pale Riders. Danny Moonstar would just torture him nonstop. That was his whole thing. But that's gotta be a bit distracting, right? While the Riders were seeking out Avalon, Damask was so annoyed by the torture and the sounds that she strangled Moonstar to death. She just couldn't take it anymore. It's like when my sister would sing Taylor Swift, I'm like, a four hour drive, come on. So dead man Wade wasn't too happy at this point, but when they finally arrived to Avalon, Wade's attack on innocent people was so much that Nightcrawler deemed it necessary to end his life. And he did so by teleporting away whilst grabbing his head. If you want to see dead man Wade in more agony, begin so with Excalibur issue one. Number two, Ultimate Deadpool. Wade E. Wilson from the Ultimate Comic Run, Earth 1610 that is, made his first appearance at Ultimate Spider-Man issue 91. Now he had a pretty rough time when it comes to the Ultimates. The Ultimates are a different story, different origins, but Wade's is 
still bad. See, in Ultimate Spider-Man, Wadey Wilson gets recruited to hunt down mutants on live television, which sounds like a pretty cool gig, but the government figured this is what the people want, and honestly, they're not too far off. People love tuning in. This is like the hot show. It's the talk of the town. And his appearance is even more shocking once Spider-Man unmasks him, and the fact that he does so on live television causes Wadey to go nuts. And it was even worse than that because Spider-Man made him feel horrible for how he looked. He said his face smelled like a KFC dumpster on a hot day. What a roast. Oh my god, Spider-Man, relax. And also in Ultimate Spider-Man issue 92, Spider-Man is about to be unmasked himself, but Deadpool prevents it from happening. He says to respect the mask. How ironic. Number one, Lady Deadpool. We just met Lady Loki and she kind of stole the entire show on Disney Plus, so we gotta end this list with Lady Deadpool. Wanda Wilson from Earth 3010 made her first appearance in Deadpool Merc the Mouth issue seven. Now this version of Deadpool cared, dare I say. She wanted to at least feel like she belonged and was part of a bigger, more important movement. So she led an assault force against the crooked General America, which was an evil Captain America in that world. And then she eventually found her place leading the Deadpool Corps, that team I've been mentioning Throughout this entire list. In fact, Lady Deadpool was the one to tip off our main 616 Wade on the whole operation. Wade actually tossed Headpool at General America, but then he bit his arm off. Headpool was from the zombie universe, so Wade had to take the General's infected arm with him after he left Wanda's Earth. All the blood, all the arms, all the Deadpools, all the fun. Yeah.